Welcome to Isadora Tutorial 4. In the previous tutorials, we've learned some basics, how to play a movie, play more than one movie, and composite those images together, and how to move from scene to scene. But as you get more sophisticated in your use of Isadora, and you start playing more movies or doing complex scenes that fade from one to the next, you're going to want to make sure to optimize your work so that you can get the best frame rate and best performance out of the program possible. And so we're going to spend some time in this tutorial where I give you some very basic tips on how to do this. Just keep in mind that in the Isadora manual there's an entire section devoted to getting the best speed out of Isadora and I really encourage you to take time to read this because it goes into more depth than we're going to go into here. So let's begin. In earlier tutorials uh, we were copying and pasting movie players and projectors to make more movies play inside of one scene. And in fact, Isadora will happily let you do that as many times as you like. In theory, there's no limitation as to how many movies Isadora can play. But in practice, the limitations of the speed of your computer and the amount of RAM it has and the speed of your hard drive will limit how many movies you can actually play. Now, Isadora will always attempt to play all of the clips at their full frame rate. But if you're adding so many that it can no longer keep up, or the resolution of the movies is so high that it can't keep up, it simply starts lowering the frame rate. And so this is the kind of trade-off that you have to kind of experiment with because every computer is different and every operating system that you're using can be slightly different. So all of these factors contribute to what the performance of the program is. One really helpful feature to know about is that if you point the cursor at a wire between two video modules, you'll see a little thumbnail of the image. And you can see here that the movie of the dancer has a resolution of 320 by 240. That's shown at the bottom of the thumbnail. That's what we call a quarter VGA image, meaning that it basically has one quarter of the bandwidth of a full resolution image, which is typically referred to as 640 by 480. Right now, we know that we have a clip that's smaller than full resolution, and usually what that means on a computer of this particular grade, I can play four or five or six of those movies and get the full frame rate, no problem. However, if you start playing a full resolution movie, the story can be very different. Now, I want to go outside of Isadora for just a second and I want to show you this is the size of a full resolution movie and I'm going to show you again the clip of the dancer and let you compare the two. As you can see this full resolution clip here is much bigger than the other one and in fact a full resolution image takes four times as much processing power to get it through the computer and show it. So by reducing the image to half size you're actually allowed to probably play four times as many clips as you would if you were doing full resolution. So one of the issues here to think about is the resolution of the image, not just how many of them you're playing. One rule of thumb too that I give to the Isadora users, when you're compressing an image into the quarter resolution format or 320 by 240, I always suggest using Photo JPEG as the compression uh, algorithm. That's for various reasons one of the most efficient on the system and has a number of advantages. Now of course a lot of people would like to use H.264 which is a very popular Kodak now but the thing is is that while the movies are very small it's very inefficient in terms of pulling it off the disk and playing it. So photo JPEG for the quarter VGA images and when you're doing a full resolution DV image which is for NTSC 720 by 480 and for PAL uh, 720 by 576 then you want to use the actual DV codec, so DV NTSC for NTSC and DV PAL for PAL. So just to compare those, I can now go back to Isadora and I'm going to import that full resolution clip. So now I have a new clip, number six, this, this uh, full resolution clip, and I'm going to go to the first movie player here, click to the left of the word movie, and type six. And so now I'm playing that clip down below. If I take the zoom and make it a bit bigger, and actually let's change the layering so that the other image is in front, I'm going to set the layer of the first projector to zero. Now you can see those two images playing. But you can also see if I point at the thumbnail that it has a resolution of 640 by 480. So that's a full resolution image being combined with a quarter resolution image. The other thing that you have to think about in terms of performance is going from scene to scene. Now here I'm going to click on scene number two. 
which has these two quarter VGA images playing. I'm going to change in the jump actor the fade time. Instead of two seconds, I'm going to change it to something quite long, to 30 seconds, because I want to use this to point something out. Look at scene number two here. It's blue and active. Now we're about to jump to scene number three because the jump actor says plus one here. But it's going to take 30 seconds to do it. Now as soon as I press the space bar, notice that scene called three turns light blue. Because in fact, two scenes are running at the same time now. The first scene we were in and the one we're fading to. And this is something you have to really keep in mind if you're doing crossfades from one scene to the next. Because in fact, we're not just playing the two movies in the first scene or the two movies in the second scene, but you're playing four movies now. And you may notice a drop in frame rate if your computer is not powerful enough to play those clips together. So this is something to, that you also need to look out for. When you're going from one scene to the next, it may be that uh, a scene is fine when it's on its own and the other scene's fine on its own, but keep your eye on it when you're going from one scene to the next.